Revocable Living Trust, one of the questions asked was, do I recommend that for a single person? You know, depending on the situation, I'll recommend it for a single person or for a married couple. It's all factually dependent on their assets, their estate, what they want to accomplish, how complicated it is, how simple it is. But just don't buy from anybody that tells you that a revocable living trust is the cat's meow. It's what you need. So that's what you need. Um, let me give you an example of um, somebody who um, the lawyers said you need a revocable living trust. Single guy, no kids. I mean, I think literally 18 nieces and nephews. And all he wanted in a very modest estate, like a bank account and a house. And his revocable living trust said, everything goes to my favorite nephew. All my assets, my house. Makes sense. How is he to understand that in order for this trust to work, he needed to put his, retitle his bank account into the name of the trust, and he needed to put his house, the deed of his house into the trust. The lawyer didn't help him with it. Most lawyers do, this lawyer didn't, unfortunately. So that when he died, there was nothing in the trust, it was unfunded. As a result, it had no control over any of his assets. So what happened was, and if you have a revocable living trust, you know this, you have something that's called a pour over will. What it means is if I forgot to put any assets in my trust, then my will is gonna capture those assets and put it into the trust. So what happened with this gentleman was we had to file um, the will with the court, captured his bank account and his house so that it would go to the trust and then it would ultimately go to the niece, the nephew who he wanted to get it. All of this unnecessary work, because all of the 18 nieces and nephews were the heirs at law, they all got notice of what was going on, which is not what he wanted. So a revocable living trust theoretically can work. Practically, it often doesn't. What would we have done for this gentleman? We would have avoided probate. We would have had a will that says all, everything goes to the nephew. We wouldn't have done a revocable living trust. We would have instructed our client to put a pay on death provision on your bank account, goes to my nephew, and a transfer on death deed on your house. So when you die, goes to your nephew. Nothing has to be done other than the nephew takes the death certificate to the bank, files what's called a real estate excise tax affidavit with the county. He owns everything. There was no probate. There was no estate administration. It was done. So my point is, is that revocable living trusts are often presented as being what everybody needs. And oftentimes they are absolutely the wrong thing. Thank you.